Hey there, Chris Sev here. Recently, I tweeted that I was removing Google Analytics from all of my websites. So this is really cool because it is a privacy-focused company that I went with called Fathom. And Fathom, a lot simpler than Google Analytics. Here is their dashboard. And actually, this is a public dashboard that I've given public access to. This is the beginnertailwind.com analytics. I'll put a link to this down below in the description. So I've been doing this thing where I look around the web, I see a really cool thing and say, let's build it in Tailwind. So here we are. Let's build this top part in Tailwind, a graph. <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. It's kind of a big project. We'll save that for another video. But this top section is some good Tailwind practice. So let's start here. Let's go into CodePen, go into Settings, Add in Tailwind right there, 2.0.3 right now. All right, drop those and let's get started here. So I'm gonna go for min height is screen. Let's go for flex item center and justify center. Okay, and then let's do a div right here that is going to encompass all of that entire section. And if we go back, that's just this big dark section right here. And I think this background might be a BG gray, like 800, 900. Let's give it a try. Class is BG gray at maybe 800. And let's go for right outside of this. Let's go for a div class is max width uh, 7XL MX auto. And the reason I'm doing this outside of it is because I don't want to tie a width to the actual card itself. I want the parent div to have the width, and then the card can just grow or shrink depending on its parent. So now let's start off with some stats. We have one, two, three, four, five stats. I'll go back in here. We'll say div times five right here. And inside of that, there were three divs for each one times three. Okay. So let's go get some information here. We had site uniques, site views, average time on site. Let's test my memory. Site uniques, I already forgot. And site views, average time on site. Okay, site views. Uh-oh, site views, average time on site. And I think they might have lowercased it. I'm a stickler for having that correct. All right. Bounce rate, goal completions. Bounce rate, goal completions. Easy enough. Now we can add in some numbers here. Let's go 928, 1.1K. And this is for the last seven days. Uh, I don't even think Fathom's been on the site for seven days yet. 1.1K. Let's go down here. 328, 86%, 59. 328. 86% and 59. And I'm sorry if this is kind of the boring part. I just want to get all this info in. And the last part of this is 76 increase, 56 increase. So let's just do this for one, two, and three, four, five. Let's just do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four, and five. And then the cool thing about this is we will handle the little arrows and we'll do that in a second. But let's start styling this out. I want to, first of all, start off with text. Let's go for gray at maybe 100 or 200. Okay. So the next thing we could do to get them all to sit side by side is use Flexbox. I kind of like using grid here. So let's go grid, grid columns as five. There we go. And the reason I like using grid there is because 100% of the time, these are all going to be the same width. And all we had to do was this right here, grid columns five. The thing with Flexbox, if one started to become larger than the others, it may take over a little bit more room so it wouldn't be as even. Now we need a little bit of a spacing in between these. Let's go for gap. X is maybe five. And let's also give this entire thing some padding. So let's go padding of five. All right, so we're looking a little bit closer. Let's go for rounded corners here. There we go. Okay, so this site uniques thing right here, site views, so the title of it needs to be a little bit smaller, I believe. 
but it also needs some spacing on the vertical axis. So let's, it looks like all of the text is the same color as well. Okay. So let's go to the parent. I love doing this on the parent and I've got a video on space classes right here, or we're going to go class space. Y is going to be maybe three. There we go. So you notice the spacing happens there. So that's really nice. Let's also go for the main thing right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Maybe I should focus on one at a time, huh? Class is going to be text, maybe three XL. And maybe even a little larger, five XL. There we go. And it doesn't seem to be that thick of a font. So let's go for font bold, font thin, or maybe is it light? I forget the class name now. There's thin. Let's check the Tailwind docs. So there is extra light, thin. So it looks like thin is the thinnest of the font weights. So we'll use that. Close that out. That's looking fine right there. Looks even thinner here, but that's okay. And this bottom part, let's do text small here. So let's go back to our code pen and we'll do it for one only class is text small. So that changed right here. I'm actually going to go ahead and do it for all of them. One, I know this is getting a little messy. Sorry about that. Two, three and four space right there. Okay. But notice how it's starting to get a little bunched. We can actually fix this by going grid columns three, and then saying only on large screens, are you going to be grid columns five? There we go. And then we can make this gap all the way to gap five so that we get gap on the top and bottom, maybe even increase that to gap eight. There we go. So that's how we can handle a responsive there. I want to drop the space Y three down to like space Y one, maybe get them a little bit closer. There we go. And then let's see what else we can do here. So that is a good size right there. Cool. So it's looking not bad. I think their font is what makes theirs like a little bit better than ours. But so far, this is fine. What I think we should also change is actually the entire thing needs to be text small. So that actually changes all of that. And now we don't need this one right here because then we don't need it to cascade down. And then what we can do is this font thin right here, we can actually change this to be a little bit stronger of a color, text white. So that pops a little bit more than the text surrounding it. And we can say text gray to get everything to be a little bit lighter. There we go. So now that looks a little bit better. I'm going to add a little bit more padding here, padding eight to match the uh, inside gaps. And as we stretch that, there we go. All right. I like how that's looking. I think this is a really good start for a cool dashboard. But the next step here is we are going to use hero icons to add in the little arrows. And I have a video on hero icons on this channel if you want to check it out. But I'm going to go to hero, heroicons.com. I'm going to search for arrow. Let's see if we can get one that points up. We don't have any. Uh-oh. Maybe I'm missing something trending up. Let's try this one. So I'm going to copy the SVG here. Really nice. That hero icons is really quick like that. Go over here to our code pen. And I'll put space right here. And I'll say class is equal to, let's do height is four, width is four, and text is green at 400. But notice how it's sitting below this right here. I got to say inline block on the SVG. And there we go. So now you can take that and use it for all of the other ones. You can add your SVGs, whether they be down or up. But I think this is actually looking really good a little different than the one that Fathom has because their font, I believe, is a little different. Let's inspect. Their font is, let's go to computed. They are using, where's font family? Apple system, system UI San Francisco. Interesting. But cool. So 
I hope that was helpful. It is kind of a fun technique to build out these dashboards that we see. If you do have anything you want to see, please let me know on Twitter, Chris underscore underscore Sev, and we'll build it in videos. But thanks for watching.